Uh, right. Let's yeah. do it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. I'm Chris Niemeyer here with my good friends, Michael McGreevy, Jason Slingerland. Oh, let's try that again. <laughs> I'm here with my good friends, Michael McGreevy, Jason Pearl, and Jamie Slingerland. We are four guys who are crazy about our wives. We love our kids and we want to kill it in business. And this podcast is all about those important domains. Uh, those that matter most to us and how they intersect, frankly, where there can be some tension. This is a safe place to talk about that. And here we are, April 2020, coronavirus, uh, global lockdown is on the top of so many people's minds. It's all across the news and likely your news feed. We just can't get away from it, it seems. And so there's this idea, there's this environment of crisis right? A lot of people are talking about that. We wanted to chat today about discovering opportunities in crisis. There's always going to be elements or environments of crisis, depending on how you look at it, but there's going to be opportunities. Are you running in place of it, McGreevy? What's up? No, I'm just trying to chew up my cashews before I have to talk. Raw cashews. All right. Raw cashews. Said his name after he took a big bite. Niemeyer, just stall a little bit with your point so that you can, that he can swallow so he doesn't pass out here with us. No, there's, there's a good chance I'm taking a bite. I'm always eating. So, you know, not your fault, buddy. Go ahead. Uh, but you were saying earlier about how during the financial crisis uh, of 08, 09 here in the U.S., that there were some major companies now that started during that time. So they weren't just focused on the crisis, they were focused on opportunities around us. So how do we as, as men, how do we as entrepreneurs discover opportunities in crisis? We wanna give you three opportunities to discover in this crisis. The first one, reimagining your business, reimagining your income. What could that look like? Jason, I wanna start with you. What, what has this crisis looked like for maybe your business and where have you found opportunities to, to grow or to reimagine your business in new ways? One of the things that's helped me is that I've got a diverse kind of portfolio of companies that I work with and do consulting with, but just last week brought out a new client. During this global shutdown, I was able to onboard a new client. And the way I was able to do that is I was able to quickly activate and talk to both of my contacts and figure out an opportunity of a package of services where we could do we could do business together. So was able to partner with, uh, with a colleague of mine and, uh, and, and pick up a new client. And, and that's all because I was, I was active over the past few weeks reaching out to my network during this time. So you took action. You took some bold action to reach out. And I'm loving what I'm seeing too, to, to this point of a lot of creative collaboration is going on. You know, frankly, people may have had a source of income dry up uh, or, or something's been on hold. And so how do you and your network look at new opportunities? Just to your point of, of new ways to collaborate with someone. Uh, Michael, how about you? How have you taken this approach? We, we're, we all have probably maybe a little more time, uh, at least at home, to, to work on our businesses. But how have you taken this crisis uh, as an opportunity to reimagine your business? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, originally, I'll be honest, the panic alarm went off a little bit when this first happened. I'm, I started thinking, all right, where are my clients going to come from now? What about all these corporate clients that I have that are cutting their personal development budgets and moving their people home? And I have all these in-person trainings that I planned on doing with them. So there was a little freak out moment there. But as soon as I took a couple deep breaths, I got back to that opportunity thinking. And sometimes the opportunity doesn't mean that you close a deal immediately too. And the thing that I'm seeing is just an incredible season to build trust and be helpful for, for companies and individuals that are going to be my future clients. So a couple of things that I did is I started reaching out to some of the corporations I work with and just offering to be helpful and listening to what they're struggling with and saying, hey, hey how can I help? So good, Michael. For me, I'm asking myself this question, how can I build my business more authentically? What's happened is 
I can't send any items to FBA because my my photography related items are not are not essential. Amazon's using all their energies to send out face masks and and products for for safety. What I can do is take this opportunity to build the streams of income that I feel like are more passionate for me. So on the people helping side, the coaching, the consulting, um, I'm doing a landscape project for the Airbnb. We have a pad out there that um, I was going to pay a couple thousand dollars to do that. I'm trying to invest in things that are going to reap a harvest that I feel like are more in line with, with my skills, abilities, and passions. Running my business in a way that gives me more energy so that I'm doing tasks in my business that I feel like are more fulfilling and um, satisfying. I like how you guys both address that, uh, Michael and Jamie, about really taking a look at how do I want my business to look? Uh, how do I want these relationships to, to go further down the road from just this immediate conversation with this client or this immediate income need this month? But you're, you're taking a look at your skill sets, your opportunities in front of you and going, okay, if I just take this approach to like Michael in your case, serve, uh, to, to be that listening ear, you know that will pay dividends in the right way when the, when the time comes. And it's already proven itself out. And, and Jamie, similarly, you are taking a look at how you'd want maybe the diversification of your income to look like, and you're taking steps now to do that. You know, I'm, I'm doing the same, and, and I'll be the first to admit I got hit really hard, uh, really hard, really early as one of my travel companies. I mean, we went from, you know, doing pretty well to like literally like a 95% drop in revenue. Like that's just, there's no roadmap. There's no blueprint for how do you handle that, right? Uh, but in that particular business, which you know, is one of a few, but I'm just reassessing everything in that business, kind of the how I'm structuring employment and how I'm taking a look at how we could maybe offer some new, new things, new ways. But Again, this is just an opportunity to look at, to reimagine your business in this time of crisis. And that brings us to point number two, the opportunity to create new habits, uh, new routines, new systems, whatever word you want to use there. But the idea is the same. Maybe you're going to find yourself at home more. Depending on what your role is, maybe you're working more hours, maybe you you're, feel like you're working less. Either side of that coin, how do you want to approach creating a new rhythm in this season. And that could be in your business. It could be in your family. It could be your personal health. Uh, guys, how do you approach that in terms of creating a new habit or new routine, new structure in this season of, of crisis? One of the new things that we started doing as a family a few weeks ago is we found ourselves obviously all being together and having time after breakfast to, to spend time as a family. So one of the things that we decided to put into practice and have been doing it every single day since is getting together for a family devotional. We go through a Jesus Calling book and have a family devotional and, and spend about 15 minutes talking about that and praying together as a family. And it really does set the tone for the day um, at your core and, and, and hits you right in the soul to, to really have the right level of posture of how you attack a day, especially in these uncertain times. Way to step up, Jason. That is one that uh, admittedly I've not been great at, but I just love that you found there's the time in your schedule and the time for all four of you to be home when you're not rushing. I mean, the typical morning can be feeling uh, rushing around, getting people out the door at certain times. And here you and Tiffany are taking that, uh, that opportunity to make a new, a new situation out of this. So well done. Michael, how about you? What are, what are you and Lydia doing uh, to maybe create some new habits or, or just adjust some routines that you've, uh, you've had in your home? Yeah, it's a necessity that you get the blood pumping on a daily basis. And I used to work out at the gym and Lydia used to go to a class and they were both out of the house. Now those are not an option. So we know we still want to move because it affects everything that we do, getting a little bit of exercise every day. So we've been doing a lot of home workouts, and I know a lot of people are doing that. But when you have little kids, that can be tough too because you're doing push-ups and one jumps on your back, and then you toss them across the room because you're not paying attention. <laughs> so we, we do uh, workouts as a family. It's <laughs> hilarious when the whole family gets together and we do a workout, and it's not perfect, but we all get our blood moving, and they see us. They see the importance of exercise as well. 
And on top of that, we make sure to get outside every day. And that's part of moving too, is getting some fresh air, taking a family walk. We take multiple walks a day on some days, but we know we at least want to get one of those walks in and a workout. Yeah, that's a good practical step, Michael. Definitely get get moving. We can get cooped up uh, too much and it's so important to do. And it's cool to see you guys doing that as a family. Jamie, what about you? How are you guys approaching this uh, this season? We're building a rock wall in our in our backyard. Uh, we got this farm behind our house, and there was like some farmer back in the day just stacked up like tons of rocks. So I'm going back there with the kids and towing the little trailer and bringing rocks in. And I got like scuffs and marks all over my hands and my you can see on my forehead. There's a with your forehead. <laughs> well, maybe I walked into a tree branch or something like that. The amount of creativity that I'm getting by being outside and lifting these rocks and doing things with my kids, I'm actually enjoying it. And maybe I should be doing more stuff around the house. Kids just want to jump in and get involved in projects if they see parents doing it. I think this break in the routine can get us back to um, us taking more responsibility for the things that we have instead of just outsourcing everything. Yeah, that's, that's, a, good, that's a good practical point too. I mean, a lot of people right now are looking for ways to cut back. Right. And so, yeah, if you're the guy that, uh, you know, used to pay for getting the gas, the gas, I can talk here. Really can. If you're the guy that's been paying to get your grass cut, like, Hey, this could be a cool opportunity to, to do it as a family, you know, and we're not just disclaimer here, just because of what Jamie said, we're, we're not advocate that you headbutt rocks, just you can move rocks by yourself. And watch out for tree branches. (laughs) Watch out for tree branches. (laughs) Um, You know, I, I know for us as a family, we're a typical, you know, soccer family. That's a big deal. And so like, we're usually rushing around and a couple nights a week, typically we're uh, eating a pretty quick meal on the go. Sometimes literally fast food, right? Well, now it's taken away. We're actually taking more time to cook meals together and uh, instilling one, at least one meal a week right now. The kids are fully in charge of everything in the kitchen. So you figure out what it is you're going to eat. You make it, you serve it, you clean it up. And it's just been great to, to kind of have that even at their young age to take on that responsibility. Uh, but we're doing, doing more home cooked meals together, which is, has been fun to do. So finally, the third, third opportunity to take during this time of crisis is to learn new skills, learn new skills. Again, maybe you have a little more time on your hands to, to improve yourself, to enhance what you already are doing. And, find ways to add something else to your tool, your tool belt, if you will. Jamie, how have you approached this in terms of adding a, a new skill? I'm taking a class at PCCI, trying to learn and improve my skills as a coach. And I don't think this would be on the radar is just because of the, um, the change in, in the economy and everything like that, where there's a little bit more free time that I have What's going on there. Brother? I was just laughing at uh, McGreevy's muscles. Oh, McGreevy, wow, that's hurtful. Awesome. Scary. They're that's scary. Really cool. <laughs> it's an opportunity for me to jump in and take a class because I have more, um, more margin. No, that's cool, Jamie. And you're exactly right. If, this wouldn't be on my radar if I was, if it was just kind of life as usual, but uh, it's just a great opportunity to double down and, increase your skills. So when the economy does rebound that you'll be even that much further along. Another cool thing that uh, Lydia and I realized we had a little bit more time within the house together. We're going to be here anyway. Let's take this opportunity to launch our podcast. So we've been recording tons of interviews with other couples who are already used to being on zoom and you're don't worry, Nehemiah. But no, it's perfect. People are already using Zoom and they're used to being home. So you know they're available. So we have a good five episodes recorded and ready to rock. And uh, we'll release it when everybody comes out of their cages. You know, I know there's been uh, all kinds of stuff I've seen online too about various courses uh, that are being offered for free, right? There's master classes from some top experts around the world that are giving away some of their content uh, or at least very reduced I know that uh, there's a popular course out there by Yale University now that's for free. Um, There's just plenty of ways to invest in yourself with some of these type of courses through Coursera or Masterclass or whomever. So take a look at that. I'll give you guys one totally practical one, right? So I'm still, we just moved into this new house. We're 90% of the way done on the remodel. Uh, So there's still some subcontractors coming in and out. 
And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to offer to kind of be the right hand for this guy while he's here. Cause I, I need to learn a couple of the basics of, uh, you know, plumbing or electrical or some tile work tomorrow. You know, like I want to have more real estate in my future anyway. I want to build upon that. And not that I'm going to become a contractor, but I want to have some basic understanding of some things that I should probably have as a homeowner anyway, frankly. Uh, so that's just a skill that I'm like, you know what? I've got a lot of extra time. I'm going to roll up my sleeves and, and learn this. So, so what is it for you? When we come to this idea that uh, there's a crisis and there's, there's opportunities in crisis to learn, to discover new ways, where could you reimagine your, your business, your income? Uh, what could you do like we shared here earlier about creative collaborations or, or finding new ways to identify what you want your income to look like uh, or your business to look like uh, when we all come through this. Or secondly, creating new habits, new systems, new routine in your schedule. Uh, whether that's your business because now you're working from home or remotely uh, or in your family, in your family routine. Jason, like he shared earlier about instilling family devotions as something they're doing together now. And then lastly, learning new skills. There's opportunities all around us if we look for them. So what about you? What are you going to focus on this week? What will you do to increase your future abilities by seeking opportunities now?